What's up, friends? Have you said to yourself, I'd love to have me a bay boat, Professor? Many times. Many, many, many times. times. Well, today we're going to look at one of the big time up and coming bay boats, a new one, a non-traditional Carolina skiff. We're going to talk about what you see here, the 26 Ultra Elite. It's a new style of Carolina skiff. And the cool thing about this is we're in Reedville, Virginia. We're here with Bubba Wilkins of Jets Marine. He's going to answer our questions. We're going to talk about who it's for. We're going to talk about who it's not for. We're going to talk about the things we like about it, Professor, the things we don't like about it. We're even going to talk about price. And by the end of this, you're going to know whether or not this is the bay boat for you. All right, so let's start here. Now, this is great because Professor here has owned a Carolina skiff for a, for a long time. Long time. And, Bubby, yeah. you told me something about Jets Marine here, which is something interesting. Which is, What's the interesting fact about Jets Marine and Carolina skiff? We're the oldest Carolina skiff dealer in the country. So wow. you have sold how many Carolina skiffs over the years, if you had to make I, a guess? I have no idea. That's a lot. Probably, in the, <laughs> probably more than 1,000, I, I way, guess. Way more than 1,000. Way, way more than 1,000. Yeah. I okay. sold 1,000 locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's and, a lot. Yeah. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the fact that um, Carolina Skiff, they've, they've had an evolution in terms of their, their hauls. And this is very different than that traditional workman style flat haul. So tell us about that evolution. When did it occur? And what are they trying to do with this more, you know, more of a V bottom than they've had in the past? Okay. Well, Carolina Skiff started out as a, like you said, a commercial style haul where you could take and build a boat how you like it. Yeah. what you fish, what you boat ride, that kind of stuff. So as the industry has evolved, boats are getting nicer, getting more seating, um, not really looking for that spackle finish on the interior anymore, consoles. Uh, so basically what Carolina Skiff did is they have evolved just like everybody else has. Um, they don't do the kit boat, build a boat stuff anymore. Um, and they've gone to uh, multiple lines as far as, but all of them revolve around shallow water. Shallow water. That's what Carolina Skiff is known. Right, That's right, the short water. Short <laughs> yep. water. My second favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with, and that's what they've done is all, they, they want to be known as the shallow water, shallow draft hull. The and shallow water. Shallow draft haul. Mm -hmm. That's Carolina Skiff's thing. That's okay. Carolina Skiff, and but they want it. They want it nice for the family. You, you know, pack up the dog, the kids, bean bags, beer, coolers. Throw it in a boat. Go to the beach. And one thing I've always loved about a Carolina Skiff, most boats with a you know a heavy V to the bottom, you have three or four people standing on one side. You know, the boat lifts really bad. Yeah. yeah. This is a very stable platform. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's solid and stable. Yeah. yeah. So so with this transition of the hull, because they still make the flat bottoms, right? Uh, they they do. They make two flat bottoms, but they're Are they tunnel hulls now. Tunnel hulls. Mm -hmm. So that's what this would be considered. No, this is this is a modified V. Modified V. Bay style, shallow water, family oriented. And their other style is the. It's more of a utilitarian, throw the everything in The name of it though is? It's the LS. They have JLS right, and right. LS. Okay, okay. And then you have the Ultra Elite line, which ranges from 19 to 26. Okay, great. So in terms of, let's talk about the power on this for a second. Generally, what are you gonna power it with? Uh, what type of engine? <sighs> and give us a sense for how fast it'll go, that, that speed range and the miles per gallon. Okay. This is packaged with a 250. Um, the 250 on this one is, is about 51 miles an hour, uh, two miles a gallon at cruise. Four strokes like to cruise anywhere between 3,800 and about 4,400. And that's their breathing range. It's where the engine runs the best. Um, you look about two miles a gallon on this. Yeah, two miles a gallon. All right, perfect. Very, very helpful. All right, so let's talk for a second about what is the ideal buyer for this boat here? What are the needs? If somebody says, you know, somebody were to describe uh, a set of needs that would make you say, I think you should choose the, the Carolina Skiff 26 Ultra Elite. 
what would those needs be? Well, one thing, Caroline Skiff, it, they have a following. So, you know, somebody started out with a little J, yep. J boat years ago, and then they went up to a bigger boat and uh, in the Caroline Skiff line. That's when they get into the ultra elite, when they start looking, they want more comfort or, or more fishing amenities. They know they still have the Caroline Skiff brand behind them, but on top of it, they've got what they what they feel they want in there the the, the upgrade yes of a of a just a bare hull boat um somebody like this boat here <clears throat> the actual uh, gentleman that's purchasing this he is he wants to go fishing yeah. but his wife wants to go cocktail cruising right. he's got grandkids that he wants to teach fishing in shallow water so this is this is the kind of buyer with you can do everything out and of this boat. and the traditional carolina skiff would not have been ideal for that you, right it would have been less luxury and probably harder on them too oh yeah oh ride. yeah yeah you would you definitely have a better ride it's a heavier boat it's a little bit deeper v boat yeah um than a traditional flat bottom boat even though it's it is a modified v uh but it's still a wide beam hull which actually gets it up in shallow water really fast um and and runs flat so it it runs the chop down. Yeah. The, the actual, when you look at these boats, the V is in the front, it's yep. not in the back. Not in the back, right, right. All right, cool, so let's get in the boat and let's talk about some of those features. Okay. All right, so let's start, Bubba, in the stern area of the boat. Now, as we're, as we're doing this, keep in mind that it was just raining before we did this, brought the boat in here, it's still messy and dirty, so don't judge us on the video because the boat's dirty, y'all. You know how people are, Professor. It is the YouTube. Uh -huh, We're yeah. trying to give you the best that we can with this, with Mother Nature around us. Okay, so with that, with that being said, with that being said. The footprints are here because people use them. People use them. That's mm -hmm. right, y'all. All right, so with that, let's, let's start with this stern area. We got a platform slash seating situation here yes. Bubba tell us about what we're what we got okay so on this boat you have uh you have a storage in one side you have a live well okay and then you have multiple seating here depends on you know how many people will want to ride back here but the important thing is it folds down so you can walk around yep. and you can do your fishing you also have a pedestal mount here so you can do either some type of fishing chair where you can lean against or sit on and, and be comfortable while you cast it. Yeah, okay. All right, so you could put a chair here if yes. you wanted to. Now, Professor, in terms of the way the platform feels to you, give us a sense for what you like and what you don't like about it. Because this is your thing. I mean, Professor yeah. does a ton, yep. a ton of speckled trout fishing. And so it's your world here. I okay. heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like the size of the platform is big. You can fish off of either side of the boat. There's no obstructions, but this is the one thing I do not like about it. It is not elevated to the length, this, to the sides of the gunnel, right. which is a real problem with me because I'm a down inside twitcher. I like my rod tip to be down close ah. to the water. And a lot of times, if well, I can't... hear that, that was smart right there, because I would never <laughs> think about that. And uh, a lot of times, if I can't get right to the edge of the boat, when yeah. I'm twitching like that, my rod tip will hit the boat. And we're using those killer bees, you know, and I can't be dinging up my rod on the side of the boat. <laughs> so that would cause you to ding it up. So that's something that's that I certainly would not have thought about, and it's a consideration. And uh, have you heard anything on that before, Bubba? Have you have you experienced that? I know, but not, Ron not, is a, like a different level he, of, he is, of, he of, is. of fishermen here. He is. Well, Caroline Skiff might be not what he needs. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's other options out there. Now, with this though, it also folds up. And so the nice thing that we see here is we have seating for three, cushion seating for three yes. in the stern of the boat. And this is where the uh, my grandkids are going to be in the boat sometimes. Right. And so the utility of family plus fishing platform comes together is pretty smart. Exactly. And, and, and I can say that probably the reason why Skiff has the size the way they are is to keep those loved ones in the yes. boat. Yeah. Yeah. And it also, it's a good stop. If, if you don't do this all the time, it is a good stop to let you know when you're close. Right. But if you are one with your boat, like most great fishermen are, they have a feel for that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That, so. that, yeah, that's exactly it. And so, so I understand these, why they did it. You, I totally understand it because you got it as you give in one area, 
it just it's a pendulum that's right. just how, how it works everything with a boat is a catch yeah there is it's, it's exactly how it works before we move to the center console professor you wanted to talk about the talons real quick yeah i mean i i love the setup and uh they're very useful tools but this particular boat has a trolling motor bow mounted trolling motor and twin talons which is great i mean you could actually use these talons to hold your boat against the wind or anything like that, but there is a side effect to having two. All right. And uh, one of them is bad enough in your way, but you can always kind of work around it. You know what I mean? Because you can be on that side twitching. And yeah. Like I say, I'm a down twitcher and you can work around it. But say I want to catch fish right here and they're just hanging out right there off the side of the boat and I'm trying to twitch here. You know, my rod tip yeah. is banging the talon there. Right. But it's a great thing, but my personal opinion, you only need one if you're going to use it in transition with your trolling motor because you can do the exact same thing right. with those two as you can with these two. All right, good, good thoughts there. Yeah. I hadn't, hadn't thought about that. I'm learning stuff today, y'all. All right, Bubba, so now we're at the center console area of the boat. Just give us just some general elements of how they've designed the center console here. Uh, well, you, of course, you've got to have a place for your electronics. Um, Nobody really binnacle mounts electronics anymore. Uh, they like the flush yep. fit um, in there. Uh, this explain got, to us what binnacle mounts for people that don't know. Okay, what that uh, is. binnacle mount is the standard. You mount it on top, you got two screws to remove it. So it's like a bracket that you would mount to the console yeah. and it sticks up all in that bracket. Exactly, okay. exactly. Understood. Yeah. So this here, of course you have your instrument for the Suzuki here. This is a gauge that lets you know the heart of the boat here, lets you know your fuel economy, speed. That, and that's pretty standard now with most engines. <clears throat> yeah, mo most of your engines uh, are all digital style yes. engines, yeah. whether it be throttle and shift or um, the type of electronics they have on it. And, and there again, I mean, it tells you everything. So it, you can scan it, uh, let you know what problems that you have out of the engine if it has, does have a hiccup in there. And plus, the important thing is it lets you know when to change your oil. Yeah, mm. very important. That is important, yeah. This, uh, now these units here talk to each other. So uh, what instrument is on this is gonna be on this unit as well. Um, and it has an engine screen on there, so they talk back and forth, it just gives you a bigger thing. But this is, this is a multifunction display that's gonna have depth uh, GPS right now, but it has the, uh, you can add on videos, underwater videos, above, above ground videos, you can do radar, you can do autopilot, side all scan. plug and play, yeah. side yeah. scan, yeah. yep, down scan, all kinds of scans. <laughs> so, so professor, when you, when you look at this center console and you think about the position uh, of the tower and just, you know, your, your general thoughts from your perspective are what? Well, my first thing that I noticed this boat, when, when I looked at it from the side, I was like, that top's a little far forward. But once I got on the boat and I stood on the rear platform and the forward platform, yeah. it's perfect placement because I'm a side and over my head caster. And the main reason I don't have a T-top on my skiff, my trout skiff, is because it is in the way of me casting. I mean, it's great to be at those hot summer days to be able to have a little place to get in the shade or something like that. But that is the reason I don't have one. And they placed this T-top perfectly in this boat for fishermen. All right, cool. Helpful, helpful to know. And it certainly looks like uh, the soft goods, they got, you know, they come a long ways in terms of the quality of the soft goods. Mm -hmm. Looks professional. Got the nice footrest up here when you're yeah, driving, yeah. Uh, when you're driving along. Lots of, um, you know, uh, rocket launchers and whatnot. These rocket launchers and the T-top itself, would this be a standard with this Ultra Elite? Uh, yes, uh, it is standard with the T-top. Uh, this does have the upgrade uh, fiberglass version in here. Um, one of the things that I don't like about this T-top is, as you can see, you, you can bump your head on, the, yeah. on these. Right, yeah. right. So it's still a little bit low. And so if you're taller than six foot, six one, 
Yeah, you're risking. But it's comfortable risking. to still grab a rod. A lot of people struggle That's the other exactly. side with exactly. getting rods out right. of them. That's an easy tall. grab for yeah. me. And I'm 5'11 and a half ish, right? So yeah. I can I can still grab that pretty quickly. Yeah. And oh. it's um it's it's in line with the back of the leaning post too. So that they place that pretty good also. Yeah. You know. Right. And it does have a tilt steering wheel, which is very important in my eyes because a lot of times you drive sitting down, a lot of times you drive standing up and it's a different angle on the wheel. That's and, a good point. And you've got a foot rack right here, so if you do want to, you know, right. set and drive, yeah. it's very comfortable. comfortable. All right, perfect. All right, so let's move to the bow of the boat. All right, so let's talk about the bow area, Bubba. It's just some features that we should be um, aware of because I'm just so used to that traditional Carolina skiff, and, and I'm seeing those family elements up here in, mm -hmm. in this 26 Alter Elite. So tell us about it. Well, the uh, first thing um, you can, it's versatile for whatever you want. So if you want the cushions on, you can have a nice place for the family to sit while you're back in the back fishing, doing whatever. Um, then when you want to go hardcore fishing from the bow, remove, remove your cushions and then you have all your storage that's underneath there. You have, you have storage here. You have a forward live well that's under your feet there. So, so you we have got multiple. two live wells in this right. boat. Okay. You've got one in the stern, one in the bow. Um, then, of course, your trolling motor up here. This is uh, <coughs> Minn Kota's newest one. It has a spot lock. It does the tracking. So you set a track, you can go through it. Is that a standard on this unit? Uh, no, it is an add-on. So this is an add-on. Add so generally somebody would spend, what's add-on cost for for one of these codas? De depends on the pounds of thrust. Yeah. Um, this is a 112, so this is gonna be, by the time it's said and done, $4,000. Okay, about $4,000. Now is that one uh, 24 volt or 36? It, it is 36. 36. All right, and yeah. the difference being? Uh, the amount of batteries you have to have in order to operate it. And they do make 12 volt uh, versions, which is one battery, uh, the two batteries is 24, and the three batteries is 36. 36. Yeah. 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 And it, that all comes, you have to have an onboard charger where you plug it up to a 120 volt outlet, mm -hmm. you know, to, re to recharge the batteries. Yeah. It's a very useful tool. Yeah. I, I, I went a long time without having one and I broke down and got one for my trout boat and it's a game changer. Yeah, 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 yeah one of those. Definitely worth the money. Oh yeah, yeah. one of those must-haves. Yeah. So, Professor, in terms of you you uh, fishing up here, any just any thoughts on this, the way that it's designed, the way it's set up? Well, again, um, I do not like that the whole platform is not level with the top of the gunnels. For the twitch. For, but yeah, for the twitch, that's the only reason. But there yeah. is plenty of room where you can walk around this whole gunnel area and fish. And I do like that. Yeah. Um, you know, the transition around the trolling motor, even when it's down, is still, you know, because a lot of times you get a big fish on it, you have to fight it around the boat. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And um, so that, that still is a little bit of a transition where this could be a little bit bigger, you know, the level spot up here. But I understand why they did it again, because they're trying to appeal to two different customers you know what i yep, mean two different right. clients two know. different needs needs at, yeah. dif at different times yep. good stuff all right and in terms of storage up here what are we looking at i mean because i see some looks like storage in the center console still so what are we looking at there Bob? all right this is actually a restroom it has a folding up porta potty area holy cow this is crazy i've never seen this before and uh, I, I was not aware of this, uh, this type of setup. So we've got what looks like this small, <laughs> we got a small um, center console area. You're thinking there's no way you're gonna have really anything in there, no way to, you know, you don't have enough room in here to have a, a traditional bathroom. So the answer to that, Bubba, is? Called a changing room. A changing room, okay. <laughs> not right. only does this have nice, comfortable cushion up here, which is looks really nice you open this up check that tilts out. up comes forward son of a gun you unzip it and there's holy there. cow so i could literally i could if i wanted to if i wanted to go to the bathroom i could go in there zip this up and you still have privacy yes nobody sees you right that's pretty bad, Professor. Pretty genius. 
that's pretty that is pretty slick it addresses some of those major issues that you yeah. see with these traditional smaller style center consoles that don't have that big fat deep like because this ain't a deep boat mm -hmm. so therefore you don't have the same amount of room that you would have in some of those big center console you know deep v hulls that you know you got more room to to do stuff with your you right know, right the, carolina skiff is utilizing every empty spot that they can use in this boat for storage or for do something else. And this is this is a happy medium for the guy that wants a fishing boat, but his wife says, I need a bathroom. I need a bathroom. The kids need a bathroom. Right. And I understand it. I mean it all it all works and makes sense and it, this is a compromise in, in my thoughts. It's a, it's all it's all about the women when it comes to boats. <laughs> yeah. And we love the fact that there's more and more women I using know. boats. I've seen the studies on this. In fact at, a, at an upcoming event, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be interviewing somebody at the Marine Retailers Association Alliance about this, the movement of so many more women in boating. It's pretty exciting. Exactly. All right, exactly. this is pretty, well done, Carolina Skip. That was a pretty smooth move. So in terms of, let's say we take away those cushions, now we, we, we transfer it or, or turn it over into what is We're in fishing mode. Fishing mode here, yeah. Professor, yeah. So uh, what are you seeing uh, that you like here with this? Uh, I like the fact that there's plenty of insulated boxes up here for your fish. You know, you have one of them great days. It's, it's a great add-on that you don't have to put a cooler in the boat yeah. to keep your fish, because that's just one more thing that takes up deck space. So I do like that. There's another mount up here for a chair, uh, you know, for somebody that just likes to, you know, rub Which top is water. not Captain Ron Edwards. It is not, no <laughs> sir. They're sitting down. Um, but no, I like it. And um, there's plenty of good, you know, foot space up here. And if you don't have the, the cushions on and you're fighting a fish on that edge of the gunnel, you could very easily hop down. And if he comes around the bow, yeah. hop up on that. So yeah. I do like it, yeah. yeah. And again, the tower, it, I mean, the uh, top is far enough back to where you can really rip the cast up here and you won't have to worry about interfering with that. Yeah, great so. stuff, great stuff. And, and he's got your uh, uh, nitro cylinders on there so you don't have the no slam hatches. Yeah, ah. that's right. And it's very important in being sneaky with speckled trout fish. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I can quietly close that. Yes. And then this way, professor's not yelling at me <laughs> to be quiet the whole time. And, and it is, and it is keyed, so whatever, Whatever fish you want to protect in there, <laughs> you can lock it up. Right. <laughs> and that's good for just uh, overall storage, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to keep things in. And it does have a, it's pretty neat, I asked Bubba what it was for earlier. If you're up here fishing and you really get into shorts, uh, there's a trim switch up here for the motor, which will trim the motor up and down. So you say uh, you pull up to a spot and you're fishing six or eight feet of water and you're back there and you don't think to trim your motor up, you're working, you're working to an edge and all of a sudden you get up in two feet, mm -hmm. one foot of water or something like that, you don't have to walk back there to trim the motor up. It's a good feature. That is a pretty cool feature. All yep. right, so <clears throat> let's wrap this thing up here in just a second. We're gonna talk about price next. All right, friends, so as we wrap this up, I know you're interested in cost and price. So let's address that because too often you see these review videos and nobody wants to talk about the money. So let's talk about it because we want to be as honest and open as possible on this channel. And the great thing is we work with companies, we work with the manufacturers, they want to be honest with us. We work with folks like Jets Marine here and Bubba, they want to be honest with us. And so if someone is going to get a Carolina Skiff, Skiff 26 Ultra Elite Bubba, roughly, roughly give us a range what would you expect them to spend on a unit like this? This boat, with the amenities you see, uh, all the Minn Kota stuff, the Simrad, this boat's right around 110 to 115, mm -hmm. uh, depending on manufacturers' uh, price increases. <laughs> <laughs> Which are happening every day, right? No rebates. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, so I think it's safe to say it could even be higher than that. So you're probably looking $110,000, $120,000. For, some, uh, for this Carolina 26, Carolina Skip 26 Ultra Elite. Hopefully that gives you a sense for things. And um, we- Key, Keywords, the elite. The elite, yeah. that's exactly right. And so we've, just to reiterate what we talked about today, this is a hybrid boat, yeah. right, Professor? Mm -hmm. You can fish it and it's gonna have some great fishing features with a few drawbacks because yeah. you can also take your family out on it. But if you wanna do them both, it seems to me like 
it's not a bad idea. I like the boat. I mean, I'd be interested in going fishing on this exact model, seeing how it rides, see how, seeing how it fishes. Um, yeah. You know, it. I think it's a great compromise. Yeah, that is a good word for it, compromise. And uh, really, it's cool what's happening with the industry. We appreciate Jets Marine. We appreciate Bob Wilkins for doing this video with us. And hopefully now, you have a better sense of this Carolina skiff, whether it's the right fit for you. And as you're looking at your bay, bay boat, of course, we're gonna have other videos on the channel that are gonna help you with this. Certainly throughout this coming year, we're gonna have a ton more of these review style videos because we feel like the industry needs more honest, open reviews where we talk about these things, more thorough stuff that you would wanna hear and see if you were uh, a buyer and not someone just selling it to you that's what makes Bubba great, and that's why we did this video. We hope that you like, we hope that you subscribe, be a part of the community, and of course, if you wanna go offshore, make sure you come see us down there in North Carolina, slip number 92 in Pirate School Marina in Manio. And until the next time, our friends, stay salty.